name is Colin Bunch. I think I've met most of you before. I'm a program coordinator with Venture Partners in the Commercialization Academy. So helping Sally scale out and build capacity for a lot of things that we're doing. And then working with Steven on the mentor network and a lot of things around that and providing services to um, a couple things real quick. Uh, you know, obviously this is a, a pivot for us. Some of our workshops around the elements class are, are you know, kind of lecture informational. This one we really designed to be a workshop, so we've you know, made some changes. Some of that is going to be homework on your all's end and uh, following up with us to get your, you know, your six numbers and using that as a discussion point, you know, with venture partners, with your licensing manager. Um, a couple of technical things I wanted to go over. Looks like most of you are good, but you know, if you're not actively talking or ask, asking a question, uh, we ask that you just turn off your video. We found that it helps bandwidth, especially now we're up to 22 people. So uh, just leave your video off, and then if you're asking a question or later on, we can, we can definitely turn that on. Um, the other thing, feel free to jump in and ask questions. Um, we'll see how it goes with 22 people. We might have to use this you know, raise your hand feature. Um, and we have uh, Sam from our office, Sally, Nicole, all kind of monitoring that so we can see, you know, see if someone has a question. Feel free to also throw it in, in the chat. Um, we found that this this goes better when people ask questions. Um, it's a really good framework, but it's meant to be used specifically with, within each of your businesses. Um, and, you know, we're here for you, so don't hesitate to jump in or ask a question or write us a message. Okay, hopefully. Okay, so now you all just see the presentation, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank everyone for coming. Uh, obviously, things are a little uh, chaotic and always moving, um, but we appreciate you, uh, you know, finding time to get with us on this part of your venture. Um, we're going to continue to adapt and find ways to provide resources. I know some of the clients we've talked to, you know, your schedule is crazy, but in some ways you have more time to look at these things. So I think trying to use this as an opportunity for your business. Um, today's workshop will be, you know, primarily led by Nicole. She's a business development associate with, with Venture Partners and probably has the most experience with the IRL framework. Um, if you haven't met with Nicole, this is a great chance to touch base with her and maybe set up a follow-up meeting. Um, and then myself, I'll be kind of handling part of the part of the presentation and then working with all of you afterwards to follow up and you know get your uh, spider web as we'll get into and where you're at on each of the IRL frameworks. All right, and really what we want to do today is kind of, you know, give you this information and framework. Uh, should have sent everyone out the full PDF of the IRLs with descriptions, the levels, and kind of more information on how to determine where you're at on your IP or on your funding. Um, and then we can use this to have conversations and help you prioritize, you know, what milestone is important next? What do I need to be focusing on in the business? Uh, first, we'll start with Sally. Uh, the Director of the Commercialization Academy. So hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it is a crazy time right now, obviously in the world and certainly on campus. So um, thanks a lot for just transferring online. And um, yeah, we're, we're going to try to make this work. Um, we are certainly still open for business and um, really excited to continue to work with our teams. Um, you know, obviously you have nothing else to do than to sit at home and work on your startup. So uh, assuming that's the case, please, uh, please reach out to us and we're, we're really happy to work with you one on one uh, and also connect you to other uh, team members, other people in the area who would be happy to talk to you, whether they're mentors or just other um, grad students and faculty on campus who are doing startups and who uh, you know, want to talk to other people about what they're working on. So um, on that note, I want to just make sure that everybody got the documents you, I'm hoping you got today, both in the Eventbrite and in an email that would have come from Angela Scovira from Angie. So you should have gotten three different documents, I believe. One is a PDF that's more or less just a one pager about innovation readiness levels. And then one is a one pager of a docx. So it's a document that you can use to write down kind of where you are and what your next steps are. 
So it's a tracking method for you. And then the third is um, what we're, uh, we're going to present today is really complex and there's a lot of information behind it. So we're going to manage to cram it all into an hour, but then there's, there's going to be follow up. So we've sent, uh, sent you a 13 page PDF that you can uh, look at to figure out, um, to get a better assessment of where you are. Um, and, and if you talk to us on the phone, we're happy to work from that document so that we can all be on the, literally on the same page. So um, on that, I'm gonna turn it over now to our speakers today. Um, I am really delighted. Oh, I will get there in just a second. Um, I am really delighted to have Nicole Forsberg uh, with us today. So Nicole has been with um, the University of Colorado almost a year and a half. But before that, she was 10 years um, in Sweden at various startups and then at KTH, which is uh, essentially the University of Stockholm. I may have mangled that. But they came up with this program for understanding innovation readiness levels. And um, we think that it's a really good thing for you to try using. So we're truly lucky to get uh, Nicole here with us today. She has worked with over 100 companies using this material. So um, secondly, of course, you've just um, seen Colin. I hope you've seen him around at a couple of our last events. Colin is gonna be really helping teams to go through this on an individual basis um, and, and make sure that you leave, um, you know, leave with, with understanding what are IRLs, how do they apply to your business, and then what are the next steps that you can, practical next steps that you can take to work on your business. So um, last thing I want to show you is on the page in front of you, this is the 12-step process that we've come up with at the Commercialization Academy for how to launch a business. And um, so we're giving, these are all free in our Lunch and Learns. We give one a month, and we've got the background, in for, we've got the video recordings of them if you want to go back and look. But just to put this into context, in the first month, we talked to you about what it means to have a high tech or a deep tech startup, why that is different from launching an app, and what some of the particular difficulties are for you. Um, so, uh, we also really talked about why, why is it in this order of 1 to 12. So we can absolutely go back and talk about that again. But for today, I'm going to move on. Number two was the intro to customer discovery. And you really need to work on figuring out who is your customer and what product would you make. So today, then, is what the hell is an IRL? And we're going to talk to you about what that is and how you can use this metric for setting up your business. So from, from there, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole and just a public service message. I think everybody is turning off your video. If you'll also mute yourself if you're not talking, then just in case all of us have kids, pets, and everything else going on right now. So if you'll just mute, um, then we'll just be able to hear the speakers better. So thanks, Nicole. I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Sally and Colin. Thank you. Um, great to see you all. And uh, I'll be uh, honest, I'm very excited to, uh, for the first time, talk about this uh, methodology in the United States of America. Because um, as, as Sally mentioned here, I, uh, I joined from KTH. Uh, it's called Kungliga Tekniska Högskola, which is the Royal Institute of Technology, uh, where this uh, IRL method was developed. and um, I had, uh, I've worked with a fair number of teams, about a, a hundred at this point around the incubator there, um, educating uh, them on this tool. And this is the first time I get to go back and, and, and speak about it here. So thank you uh, all at uh, Venture Partners for uh, actually uh, adopting this. I, I pitched it when I started about a year ago and, and now we're testing it for the first time. So, um, the uh, innovation readiness levels uh, were based on uh, what you all probably are quite well acquainted with, the technology readiness level, which is sort of a, a global standard of categorizing uh, the development of, of a new technology or technological invention. And so there was this group uh, back in Sweden that were, you know, scratching their heads as they were 
helping this new, uh, these new um, technological inventions uh, to reach the market. And I was thinking, you know, it's kind of expensive uh, to put all this money and effort into, into uh, this technology if there is nobody that's willing to pay for it. If there's no team to bring this company forward, if there's no funding to, you know, properly prototype it, uh, there's no actual total addressable market, um, and so forth. And you probably also recognize this from a um, a book called The Lean Startup, uh, written by Eric Ries and, and Steve Blank, um, uh, where which is really to sort of while you are developing your technology and investing in it, you should also make sure that you have the customers on board. In other words, that you're addressing a need that somebody uh, is is willing to pay for. So it is really a tool that is aimed to sort of de-risk uh, your process uh, of, of development. And um, I am certainly a visual. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but um, this is having colors and scales and in this way a, a spider web to actually see where you are in the development helping you prioritize what to do and maybe where you're actually performing really well and know where your focus is in a very quantitative way it helps de-risk your process of development but it also helps to actually in your in your team um, uh, avoid any sort of confrontation because it is a very quantitative tool and you will see this throughout this workshop. All right, let's see. I'll do the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> just a short explanation of, of what we will uh, dive into here in, in this session. Uh, you have gotten this uh, information before and as, as Sally mentioned and Colin as well, if you did not receive this, please do let us know. Um, so here are the, the six scales. And uh, so the technology readiness level, we spoke about a little bit here. Um, and the customer readiness level is really to see, you know, confirm with your potential customers uh, if there is an actual sort of need and an interest, something that they're willing to pay for, different steps on how you can um, advance the process with your customer and the business readiness level well it's closely tied to the customer readiness level but it is more to see sort of the the, the addressable market uh, um, if, if this is actually you know um, yeah um, yeah to total addressable market and related to that um, and then we have the intellectual property readiness level, which we all love at uh, Venture Partners, since that is uh, the sort of main part of, of what we do. And you will also see how uh, the in IP readiness level is sort of, you know, securing your IP situation. And this can look different uh, depending on if you're a you know, software-based startup or you're a biotech or, you know, in, um, hardware startup. But these levels are really uh, set and you can see this for yourself as well in a fairly general way so that it can be applicable on different types of, of uh, products and, and, and services. Um, and IP is tied uh, really closely to the technology readiness level. Um, and team readiness level, um, right, if you ask any investor uh, around the world, uh, team is the main thing that they are in investing in, right? If you have the right competences uh, uh, to to pull this forward, um, you know that you will succeed in one way, shape, or form, even after ten pivots. But you will sort of you will you will figure it out. And um, this scale is really to help you find out uh, what type of competences will you need and when will you need them. Um, and last but not least, as we all know, money makes the world go around. Uh, these are uh, nine different steps to help you figure out sort of um, do you have the proper funding or how far along are you in the funding um, uh, uh, process. All right, so can change slide here. Thank you. Um, and tying back to sort of the, the visual process here, which is uh, a, a big benefit of, of the innovation readiness levels. Uh, and you can see that the, the pretty colors here. Um, the red 
uh, the red area of the thermometer is level sort of one to three, and those are uh, the very early stages of the development. And as you can see, it's sort of the initial contact. It's, this is the process when you first uh, submit your invention disclosure to us to translate it into, into our process. And you're sort of hypothesizing on a need in the market, very um, sort of um, uh, early stage technology. And um, when you, as you move further up to the, closer to the yellow levels, this is when you're uh, uh, sort of being able to de describe the idea you actually have found something that you want to sort of submit a patent for. Um, we figured out that it is something that we would, you know, that it's, it's a yes, it's a go. And um, in the customer, as far as the customer area, you can see the difference between level three and level four is really whether you're in your four walls hypothesizing on a on a need in the market. Uh, next step is to actually go externally and and ask an actual customer to see if this is something that they're onto. And so that's when you're in sort of the pre-study phase, which is all right. Let's we're onto something. Let's you know let's invest further. Let's invest further in this. Um, and as you move on to the greener areas, well, that's when you know that you're, you know, this is this is really something we're investing in. We're sort of we're we're approaching sales, uh, um, not doing sales yet, which you you will see. But we're really getting close to pilot projects, and we're working closely with our customers. This is a project. This is also typically where you would see a startup incorporating because you've sort of picked enough boxes to see that all right let's just create a company around this let's turn it into a project this is where we want to you know uh, put some money into development and really turn this into a, a, a commercial product so uh, all right moving on to the next yeah so um i'll just um before colin will uh, take over and walk you through all these um, readiness levels a little more in depth. I will start with the uh, level or uh, the technology readiness level, which is, as you can see, if you look at le level nine, the it's still sort of we're using some of some of the NASA um, uh, words here, um, system qualified through successful mission operations. Um, but what I wanted to, and you all have the text and uh, the sort of more dis, uh, more in-depth definitions of the different levels here. So I won't, you know, uh, read that through uh, step by step. But I thought that I could ex give you a sort of a practical example because uh, there might need to be some clarification between the different levels. Suspecting that most of you might be in level three, maybe four, um, perhaps level five, uh, not sure, but they're in the earlier stages and uh, look forward to hearing more about that uh, later on. Um, but uh, one question that came up as we were sort of running through this before was, um, what is actually sort of the difference between uh, technology validation and laboratory versus technology validation in relevant environment. And so I thought about um, one of the technologies that we're working on here is a, uh, a, a thermometer technology. We'll use that as the example. So this is a, a sensor that can measure your core body temperature uh, externally. And um, at a level four, this thermometer um, would typically be uh, just validating that, that it works. Uh, validating no 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 sort of no humans involved just uh, making sure that the gadget can you know sense whatever we think it can sense um, the difference between level four and level five when it comes to the relevant environment it is that the, the gadget is actually put on the cheek or somewhere on the body where it is a sort of a relevant environment where it's planned to be able to work for your customer um, so that is level five um, and the validation part here, as you can see, um, from level five versus then going up to level six, is really that you're testing it on your colleague. You're testing it. It's it's a it's a very ugly product, but you 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 know you see it that it works in a relevant environment on a actual human being. 
uh, level six is a demonstration. That's when you've actually polished the, uh, the piece of hardware and you can use it to demonstrate it. Would, as as Eric Reese would say, right, the sort of minimum viable product, but it's polished enough so that you can um, you can uh, speak about it uh, loud and proud um, in a relevant environment uh, with your sort of um, yeah po possible clients and it and and they are humans, um, right? And so uh, suspecting that you might sort of be in that area, I just wanted to give you a practical example. And then going up to sort of um, level eight uh, versus level nine, uh, as you can see, it is sort of a test and demonstration phase still in level eight. Uh, level nine is when the thermometer is packaged and you can buy it in the stores or buy it online. Um, level eight is, it, it's still sort of, it works, it's polished, but it's not, you know, it's not in the sort of the pretty package. It doesn't have the, the full makeup on yet. So I hope that uh, made it clear for you and happy to chat more about this in detail one on one later on as well. All right. I think Colin, I am handing it over to you. Cool. Any questions from anyone real quick? And we'll have time at the end as well. All right. Not seeing anything. Um, feel free to raise your hand or send it in the chat. And we will get on that. All right. Um, so thank you, Nicole and Sally, great intro. Um, so these are all related and that's kind of the point of having that spider web, but we wanted to draw special attention to the TRL and the IPRL. Um, obviously, if you're working with venture partners, this is kind of like an easy button or uh, maybe an area that you have a lot of assistance with, but definitely related to the technology, you know, development level and where you're at, you know, when it's worth getting protection, you know, what they can look for. Um, so a good place to look at is, you know, going from like a three to a four on a three, um, you might have some detailed description of what it's actually doing. Um, maybe you've done some initial prior art search or work with one of the licensing folks like Kate or Josh or Marta. Um, and then moving into a four, you've done some work or, you know, we've done some work rather to confirm that this is patentable you have a clear business case for certain protections and which ones you'd want to go after. Uh, according to their system, you know, this might be where some people have a provisional patent and you really working with, you know, venture partners or even a law firm, someone professional to start mapping out your IP strategy at this point. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we see is, you know, a lot of our companies are, are really well represented here or maybe higher up than you know they would have to be typically because we have a lot of resources um, so again you know take stock of where you're at understand where you need to go but get with venture partners with the licensing team and, and helping make those decisions and, and keep things moving does anyone have any questions on the intellectual property readiness level Okay, and, and then just keep in mind that that is basically tied to kind of where you're at on the technology readiness level. Um, those kind of go, go hand in hand especially well. All right, uh, customer readiness level. This is a big one for, uh, for us, for the Commercialization Academy, um, for Sally, a lot of what we focus on in working with people. And looking at, you know, starting the bottom, uh, as Nicole mentioned, you know, really you're in the lab, you're kind of thinking about, you know, what could be needed. Maybe you've done some just kind of secondary research or looked at industry blogs or reports, that kind of thing. Um, and so like a level three, you know, you've actually made some contacts with customers. Some of our programs like uh, R2M, uh, Launchpad, even our customer discovery class are really focused on, okay, how do we get with example, some early viable customers, get a more clear understanding of the different segments, you know, so not manufacturers, but certain types of manufacturers of certain sizes and areas, and who are you working with? And then looking at like a level four, you're gonna have five to 10 potential customers that you have a relationship with that you can contact and get feedback. Um, it's typically not any kind of sale, but they're very interested in what you're doing. They're willing to meet with you multiple times. Some of those people could be your potential first customers. Um, 
And so five to 10, if you're in a business to business segment, which most of us are, if you're selling to consumers, we really want to look at, you know, 10 to 20 or more that you have some kind of regular relationship with. Um, and so some of you, as you're going through this, if you're looking at it and say, okay, you know, how do I, how do I move my CRL up? Um, it's going to be, you know, going to maybe, well, I guess not right now, going to trade shows, but going to, you know, virtual conferences, reaching out to people, you know, on LinkedIn or through trade groups, leveraging Steven and the mentor network, both directly as potential you know, people to talk to, but also their referrals. Um, so just have a clear understanding of kind of where you're at and then where you want to go uh, to having that ongoing relationship with people to get feedback on what you're doing. All right. If anyone has any questions on the CRL, again, feel free to just message us or follow up afterwards. Um, a lot of these make more sense as you go through the full descriptions and apply it to your business. Um, but I appreciate on some of them, they have very specific criteria for knowing where you're at. Um, and then obviously the customer readiness level is related to the business readiness level. Um, and this is focused on, you know, not just is there a market, but is there a way to tap into it? You know, can't other you know, distribution channels, you have a model that actually can generate revenue. Um, and so, you know, looking at a lot of our clients right now, um, a lot of them are at, you know, between a one and a four. And so looking at level one, you know, you, you know your technology, you know what it can do. You probably thought of, okay, here's some areas that this could be applied or we've seen other inventions like this go. Um, you probably hypothesized them with your team or uh, maybe even mentioned in some papers. And then moving up to just a two, is really getting into understanding the needs assessment, what benefits it has for customers, and then even looking at competitors. Um, you know, whatever you're doing, the business organization has found a way to solve it currently, even if it's just ignoring the problem. Um, so understanding what else is out there, how companies or organizations are solving this now, and then getting an understanding of the total market. So, you know, how big is the market overall? And then what's really addressable based on what you're doing? Um, and so mapping some of those things out and understanding what you're gonna to need to do to hit those things moving forward. And then as you move farther up in the, mo in the business readiness level, it's having a good uh, connected business model, uh, which we can share out. And we, we talk about it in a lot of our classes, but you know, how do all the pieces of your business fit together from solving a problem for customers to actually getting it made to having a clear revenue model. Um, we also see a lot of early stage, you know, deep tech companies who sometimes they can get revenue from contract work or other things, but it's not actually testing their long-term business model. You know, do people want this product? Will they buy it on this market? Um, versus kind of early ways to get some revenue that don't really test your business model. All right, does anyone have any questions on the business readiness level? All right, and we'll have some time at the end again. Okay, uh, your team readiness level, as Nicole and I think Sally mentioned, you know, this is, this is really important, as you, especially as you move up in the other areas and you begin looking at funding outside of non-dilutive sources. Uh, you know, angel and venture funding really want to see a strong team. Um, sometimes they they see you know, different, different kinds of technology that can address a problem and it's the team that can execute on that that's gonna end up winning long-term. Um, and so we see this in a lot of our classes where uh, you know, faculty have a really good lab team um, and now they need to begin thinking about, okay, how do I get into the market? You know, who's gonna handle my books or help me create financial models to actually work with investors? Uh, who's going to help me with sales? Um, you know, some of our teams are, you know, looking for a CEO who's going to help drive this, help raise funding, all those things. Um, and so a lot of the folks we're looking at are between a one and a four. I know around level two, you know, they're just starting to understand that, okay, there's some skills and resources that we don't have. Um, I think it's especially tricky for you all as research scientists that you're, you're very, very smart. You're in the top of your field a lot of times. And then you're getting into these areas that you don't have any experience with typically. So just kind of around a level two understanding, okay, there's things that, you know, we don't have on our team currently um, or resources. 
And then moving up, so if you wanted to move up to like a level three, you begin to fill in some of those gaps. Um, it could be from hiring someone, maybe a grad student or postdoc that has those skills, or working with a CPA firm or a law firm or you know marketing organization. So finding ways to fill those uh, doesn't always mean hiring you know ten people on your team. Um, and then on a around level three, having really clear ideas of what you're still missing, what you're going to need as you grow. So. You know, if we move up and we have a business and we start to work on some pilot projects with customers, you know, what are we going to need then? How, you know, as the scales out and we begin production and selling, what will we need at that point? So having a, a good idea of what competencies you have so far in your team and what's going to be needed to take you to that next step, you know, on the next one. Um, and then we see some teams that have a really defined plan for building their team. So beginning to look at okay, this next milestone is our you know, customer beta, and we're gonna need these people. After that, we'll need additional funding, which will also get us you know, our sales team. Um, so it needs to relate to the rest of your business model and the funding model, but having a really good idea of what are you gonna need to execute on this business and grow. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, investors are are looking for this. This is, you know, TechStar says the top three of the five things they're looking for are team, team, team. Um, so this is definitely closely related to, you know, how ready are you for funding? Um, and you know, we really look at sources of non-dilutive funding. We obviously have Lab Venture Challenge, a lot of programs within CU, and then. A lot of our clients, and we're continuing to work on, you know, SBIR, other sources of non-dilutive funding, and then getting into venture funding. Uh, I know a lot of you attended Destination Startup, which was just a few weeks ago, but it seems like forever, uh, where we had a number of companies pitching, and we had a lot of investors from the state and outside the community come in to meet those people. Um, so looking at, you know, a lot of our clients around the three or four late phase. Um, so at a level three, you really to find a business concept. Your team has knowledge of different funding options, so you know when you could do an SBIR or DOD projects, um, you know, how those work, when they would come into play. Typically, we've seen teams at this level get some kind of soft or non-dilutive funding, specifically around commercialization. So, you know, maybe it could be something for your lab, but more an SBIR grant or something that has the intent of commercializing with it. And then moving up to a four, you have a really succinct oral pitch, something that you can present at somewhere like Destination Startup or Lab Venture Challenge. And you have a funding roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months. So understanding what you're, you know, how much money you're burning each month, what you're gonna need to get to that customer beta, and you know, who you're gonna approach for, the, for that funding. Um, so having a good idea of where your funding sources are, you know, both locally or potentially nationally. Um, and that's something that, you know, we have pretty good track on and then we're reassessing right now with some of our interns to look at, you know, what are all the local, state, national programs that we can tap into that are, that are worth pursuing. Um, does anyone have any questions on the funding readiness level? I've got a question. This is Sally. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, I, and this may be for Nicole. Um, Nicole, can you explain, is this more about like pitch competitions or is this venture capital funding or is this like SBIRs? So what kind of fund? Uh, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Good question. Um, so uh, up until, uh, I'd say level one to level five, is typically focused on non-dilutive funding, as, as, as Colin mentioned here. It is, uh, um, if you correlate it to, for instance, the technology readiness level, uh, one to level five, right? It was the, the example with the thermometer being <clears throat> tested on a colleague versus uh, a polished one that you could actually use on, on a potential customer. And so um, having um, the uh, funding at that level is usually right your your SBIRs or your your sort of grant money that you that you've received and going up to level six then when it's 
you know, you've, you've verified uh, all the other areas, you are looking for private funding. So that's sort of the, as you can see here between level five and level six, it is, it is, that's when you're looking at even, I see that they even write out the word private investors and initial contacts take into that. That's when you're actually like, you've had enough boxes that have been ticked in all the different readiness levels so that you're willing to take the risk to get a private investor. And so level six and above are really sort of how successful are you to turn this into a, um, a commercial project and something that can be revenue generating. Somebody's willing to put their private capital into this. Um, did that answer uh, the question? Yeah, that's really helpful. Could you also just follow as a follow up on the, the level three, it says first small soft funding secured. So what is, what's mm -hmm. that talking about? Yeah, that's a great question too. And so that is um, what typically uh, uh, that funding is um, verification funding. So in now just bringing an example for KTH, and I think even uh, in the sort of more detailed descriptions, they even have an amount, uh, and I'll tell you it's all in SEK, which is Swedish Krona. Uh, you just divide it by 10 and you'll get US dollars. Um, we could possibly look into uh, mo um, moderating this um, uh, as, as we move along to US dollars. Uh, so I apologize for that. But that type of funding is really uh, used as, so in KTH example, those, those amounts were used to pay a consultant. If we had a really high potential technology that we brought up to level three, and we see that, you know, this is really something, but we need to, we need to have somebody to look at, uh, at the potential market, do just the initial potential customer interviews. Uh, so this funding is to be able to pay somebody to help you do that um, initial uh, market uh, validation, really. Um, I think some, if you have, I mean, it's not my area with, with grants in the U.S., but the, the, the DARPA E grants, right? They have a sort of a commercialization uh, part budgeted to it that would fall into that, you know, a, a sort of a, a budget set for reaching out to customer somebody to sort of look at the, the uh, potential market. Thanks, Nicole. That is super helpful. Um, and for anybody else who is curious about that, I'll just throw out then that, that I can name several different uh, ways that small soft funding might be available. One is obviously through the Lab Venture Challenge, which happens uh, on campus in November. But there's also state money under the Advanced Industries grants. Um, as, as Nicole pointed out, there's also ARPA-E funding has part of that money is for commercialization, like 5% of your large grant on that. And then there are other small resources. Um, for instance, if you go to the i national cohort to do your customer discovery, that is a $50,000 grant um, to help you pay for the costs of doing your customer discovery. So um, yeah, that's super, super helpful to understand, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sally. <laughs> cool. Yeah, just to plug, Sally's working on some other some other programs and sources, so stay tuned. Um, all right, any other questions on the funding readiness level? Cool. Good stuff. Thanks, Sally. All right. Um, I don't know if you want to finish this up, Nicole, um, but really this was just to kind of reiterate that this all flows together. Uh, obviously, you can kind of move back and forth within the levels based on what you're doing or if you have a setback. But the idea is overall to understand where you're at in this process, make sure that you have some balance, that you don't get too far ahead in any one area because they are all interconnected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, I can add to that. You see between the pre-study and the project, that is a, a, a very sort of distinct stage. It's really when you've done enough, you know, you have identified the need, you describe it to a customer, you've verified it externally, you haven't just, you know, asked your customers about if it, or your colleagues if it's something that they're interested in. You've actually talked to customers and, you know, you have, uh, you're looking into the, this is, you know, verified enough to look for private funding versus grants. And, uh, you know, you have enough competencies in your team to actually turn it into a project. 
uh, as per the KTH uh, <clears throat> sort of KPI tracking. This was also a very distinct, uh, the conversion from pre-study to project is considered a very big success factor because that's when you really sort of had ideas meet the market uh, in a, in a, in a uh, you know, quite robust way. Uh, and as you can see, if you look at the circles down there, it's, you know, between verifying and developing, you know, you're starting to develop it. And then the deal, that's sort of the, the first customer or first investor, private investor, uh, you know, it's out on the market, the, the, the first sale, uh, and that's when you're sort of a commercial project. Um, and that is obviously the, the biggest KPI to track, but, but uh, the, the, the pre-study to project is also something that, and, and you all, if you have uh, gone from pre-study to project already in some areas, that is, you know, worth celebrating as well, I should say. It means that you've done a lot of hard work and gotten a lot of intel from the market. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, and our hope in using this is to, you know, help give clarity. There's, you know, you all have a lot of things going on and this is a new, you know, some of this is new to a lot of you. And so to give clarity on where you're at and then for us to work together to, you know, have the same language and understanding of what you need to focus on and meeting with your licensing people and then even meeting with mentors and investors so you can be very articulate about this is where we're at in this area. This is what we're going to do to move forward. And it, it also de-risk it for them to work with you. Nicole, can I ask another question? Yes. Sorry. So, so um, as you know, I, I tend to preach the gospel of do customer discovery and understand that there's a product market fit well before you incorporate your company. But I'm curious mm -hmm. about where you all, where is customer discovery in this? And then where like is things like actually incorporating your, your company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Great question. And um, so the whole pre-study phase, uh, so the red versus the yellow is really red is you're in your four walls. Uh, and the yellow is when you're out doing the customer discovery. That is the interview process of your, uh, yeah, that would be the sort of research to market phase, right? Um, out talking to customers, verifying the needs, um, what's the willingness to pay, and, and, and so forth. Um, and uh, uh, sorry, you mentioned the incorporation, right? That was the second question. Um, so uh, the green phase or the project phase, that is typically when you have enough intel from the markets to decide to um, uh, create a company around it and this and when creating a company right that naturally goes into the mode where you are uh, willing to or uh, sort of feel ready to talk to private uh, in investors uh, the technology is um, <clears throat> mature enough and well functioning enough to actually sort of demonstrate to customers um, which is also right. You verify that you can actually build this product, and and I know you you all have such complicated technologies, you know, cutting edge in in the world. And um, <clears throat> this is also sort of um, from yellow to green, verified that this is something you can accomplish uh, in alignment with the needs of of, of your customers. Um, so yeah, incorporation typically there also that conversion between pre study and project. Um, yeah, let's keep, uh, let's talk through the, the worksheet real quick and then have some last questions. Um, Nicole, do you want to talk through this? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, we thought, you know, we have to uh, workshop. That's fun. Put it into practice. That's when this tool is actually, uh, actually, you know, v valuable. It's, it's, it's quite fancy with all the colors, but it's even fancier when you translate this into action. And assuming that you have heard of the methodology SMART goals, and I apologize for not reading up on exactly, but it is um, uh, uh, what, uh, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound, right? Um, so this worksheet is really to translate the uh, IRLs into SMART goals. And so as you can see here, this is just a, a, an example um, on 
we where we've coupled the CRL and BRL because they sort of align very closely together with each other. So in the first column here is the activity. You know, it's it's what you want to do. Yeah, read the book, talking to humans. And the second column there, output deliverable, is really the why. So why would you do this? What do you want to get out of it? Well, it's because. Uh, oh, let's see. Um, sorry, this has been um, flipped a little bit. Um, it, it's the, the third one there. Um, gain, no, wait, I don't know why this is double. Well, okay, I'll wing it out. So the output deliverable here from reading the book would really be to have a clear uh, view on how to uh, efficiently interview customers. That's what you want to get out of reading the book, right? The knowledge and, and sort of on how, on how to do this. That's why you're doing it. And the third one is really important, right? You know, who is responsible to do this? Maybe you're two people in the team that are doing this, but in this case, this is Christina. And by when and month, I mean, it can be really hard to have a specific date like it's in the way, but to have, you know, uh, and in this case, the end of May or, you know, a month when you when you want this uh, to be completed. It, it's important to sort of set that goal too, um, uh, because when it comes, you know, when you have all the readiness levels and all the tasks in your company, and you know this better than I do, but to have sort of an owner of the tasks uh, can eliminate a lot of conflict and and uh, misunderstandings in, in the team. Uh, I have seen plenty of that in uh, working with this model, but this has really helped to sort of uh, divide the. Um, the tasks between the people and the second one here is uh also and you as you can see read the book talking to humans 89 pages it's very specific and in this case reach out to 10 companies in biomaterial sector cto like you want to ideally target that person and it's a quantitative number it's 10 companies and then why are you doing this well it's because you want to get in insight on the needs um uh, feedback on product and so forth. And yeah, you can read read, read the the rest of it. Uh, but uh, what we would really want you to do here as well is to look at the upper two columns, current CRL and BRL, and then where you plan and for what period of time. So um, the, I, this is going to take some time and, and please do reach out to us if you do have any questions on definitions and where you are. Uh, but to put sort of try to be honest, it is very easy to overestimate where you are. I know myself, you know, working on some stuff, it, 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 it's easy to overestimate. So, so try to be, for your own sake, very sort of honest on, on where you stand and then um, sort of where you want to be. Um, typical uh, sort of period of time to set goals can be a quarter. Um, so you got a few months to, to complete this and, um, you know, translating the actions into where you want to be. Um, it's, you know, just a process of quantifying everything as, as, as much as possible, really. Uh, Great. Right. And, and so we would, yeah, we would really like for you to send this in to us too and help. And, and, and we would love to help you sort of walk through these, these worksheets too. Um, yeah, great. Does anyone have any questions on the worksheet? Um, and really, a lot of this is, you know, unfortunately, homework for you all, but a great place to have the, our next conversation conversation with venture partners. Um, mm -hmm. So from here, if you if anyone, uh, you should have got the PDF, and I'll make sure I email out everybody a copy of the presentation. We have a video of this Zoom, and then the supporting PDF. And then as your team works through those six levels, uh, you can send them to myself. And uh, we will internally create the spider web for you um, and then use that as a jumping off point to have our next discussions. Great incentive to get your tailored spider web, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a little bit of time, about 10 minutes left. Does anyone have any other questions you know, about anything specific or where they're at or anything for Nicole? I've got one more question. This is Sally yet again. Um, so I, looking at the specific um, tasks, it looks like you, so you take those, how do you know, like on these, how do you know that you need to work on your CRL and your BRL versus your other ones? So when you look at the spider web, I had to decide where to make specific action items. 
Oh, yes. That is a great question, and I cannot believe we didn't touch on that. Good catch, Sally. <laughs> so the whole thing between sort of translating these thermometers into the spider web is to visualize. So the goal is really to keep it round, as round as possible all the time. And that's why the spider web is created. Because when you keep it as round as possible, I know it's not always sort of possible to keep it on the exact same level of the different readiness levels, but the, the rounder it is, the less risk you are sort of uh, exposed to when you do the development. Um, I mean, uh, um, obviously I mentioned the, the uh, example of investing time in your technology without having anybody to pay for it. But, you know, investing your time in a ton of potential sales, promising to customers, finding the willingness to pay, but you don't have any product to sell. That's also a very expensive use of your time. So, so trying to keep it as round as possible. That's why this, um, visual tool that you all will get uh, after sort of submitting your your um, uh, state now and your your goals for the upcoming uh, four months uh, is uh, really to see sort of where yeah how you can keep it as, as, as round as, as possible all the time that is the de-risking part that we mentioned throughout this presentation um, yeah so setting goals on on all the different areas um, and, and knowing who is responsible for it and when you want it achieved. And did, did that answer it properly? Yeah, that was any much. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and like, please feel free to bug us while you are, uh, or bug is the wrong word, please feel free to contact us. We would love to help if there is anything that is unclear when you are going through the worksheet. Uh, it's a lot of information to take in, and it's a, maybe for some of you, a new way of thinking. So, you know, it's, it's a process in the making. The first, uh, the first attempt does not have to be perfect. Um, it's a sort of a, a learning process in itself. Hey guys, uh, I have a question. If we're if we're going through this process and realizing our um, what would have been a nice round shape is looking more like a Pac-Man with one mm -hmm. axis that's really deficient, could um, maybe putting the the technology readiness level aside, uh, which is um, an area of strength for for researchers, could you name uh, just a starting resource for each of the other ones? Where would we get started if we're just really behind on any of those other axes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Yeah, um, so um, let's take a an IP might not be the best uh, example here because oh yeah, if you are really low on IP definitely the licensing manager will help you get up your IP readiness level if that is sort of the, the, the gap in the mouth for the Pac-Man. Um, but um, I think um, um, Sally and, and Colin mentioned some, some really great resources if your Pac-Man is, you know, it's high on technology, high on IP, and, and some of the other ones, but your funding is, is very low. Um, the, uh, the the sort of overview of the available grants uh, that take brings you up to at least five right all the stuff funding from level one to five that's a great way uh, we re reach out to, to to Colin or Sally can 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 help you with that and and um, uh, if you are very high on all of these um, uh, levels and funding is level five um, <clears throat> we can also help you know get in touch with. Uh, investor contacts, but also, you know, ha and, and, and Sally, maybe you can answer this, or, or I know that you can answer this much better than I do, but pitch training and sort of helping to get you sort of investor ready and what you need to think about um, for that and our wonderful mentor network as well, right? Running your pitch deck over or by uh, uh, one of the greatly competent uh, mentors that we have in, in the network as well, um, that would be a great um, opportunity to, um, to um, so we, we try, right, to have resources in all these different areas, but I think specifically for the funding one, which I think, I suspect, could be one of the bigger challenges for, for, for a lot of, a lot of you, um, I mean, yeah, talking to the, 
uh, to, to, to Sally and to Colin about, you know, uh, that are experts in grant funding and proof of concept funding, anything to bring these great inventions to market, um, I think is a great resource. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the sort of expert talk up to Sally and, and the Colin uh, on this one. Um, yeah, I think that was great. Um, I think, uh, you know, short answer is connect with venture partners and we either have something in house or through our network like Stephen with mentors who can get, you know, one degree of separation to get you a resource. Um, and then we're, there's a lot of things in the city and the state that we can tap into as well. So I think the short answer is get with, you know, your licensing manager or contact Sally or myself um, and we can get you started. Mm. Yeah, and that accounts for team too, right? Suspecting that that might be the mouth of the Pac-Man in some cases too. It's um, it's hard to find the right people in this world, <laughs> and that is also something that 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 we can help out with uh, through the mentor network, right? Uh, is 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 a great great asset of of uh, uh, achieved entrepreneurs and really competent people that are in the area that are willing to help maybe looking for the next sort of technology to bring to the market. Many of them have done this many times before. So I think that is also a, a really valuable resource to bring you that sort of that thermometer from the red parts up to getting closer to the green. Okay. Any other well, questions from anybody? Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna, uh, we've got about three minutes to wrap up. So I'm gonna just stop and say thank you very, very much to Nicole and Colin. Um, this was fantastic. So thanks for presenting this and helping the, us to understand this. Um, big picture, everybody, looks like a framework that you can use to determine where you are and where your gaps are to getting a company off the ground. So. Um, we do hope you'll reach out to us and uh, try this and um, see if the visual visualization helps you to figure out uh, concrete next steps. Um, and we do look forward to working with you. So thanks again to everybody joining. We will obviously be having more events online. So if you liked it, if you hated it, if you have constructive criticism, do reach out. I'm sally.hatcher at colorado.edu. Colin's email is up here. Um, let us know what you think, and we will work on, uh, of course, continually improving our presentations. So thanks again. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you at the next event.